Persona 4 Golden is my favorite game of all time, and since we're so close to a thousand subscribers, I decided I'd do a challenge run in the game that started my love for JRPGs. So let's answer the question. Can you beat Persona 4 Golden on hard mode with only Jack Frost? I step out of the train station and I meet my uncle Dojima and my cousin Nanako. Then at the gas station, I shake hands with this greasy looking guy, and then after, I get sick. So remember to wash your hands, people. We go home and later that night, I have a strange dream. And this starts my first battle. And because I don't have our little hee-ho boy yet, all I can do is guard against its fog until I wake up. Then starts my perfectly normal school life. And here I'm introduced to my fellow classmates Chie and Yukiko. And as we walk home, we discover a crime scene where we see Dojima working his job as a detective. He tells us that a murder happened and that we should head home for safety. The next day, I see a guy rolling around the trash and he introduces himself as Yosuke. Then after school, he takes me out to eat to welcome me into town and Chie also comes to advance the plot. Then we meet Saki, a girl Yosuke has an interest in, and once she introduces herself, Chie fulfills her role by advancing the plot by mentioning the Midnight Channel, a special TV channel that only appears during rainy nights. And after hearing this, I go home and wait for midnight. During this time, the local news shows an interview of the student who found the murder victim, and suffice it to say, she looks a lot like Saki. Then the clock strikes midnight. The TV turns on and shows a girl in distress. Then I put my hand in the TV. I'm not really sure why, but after one concussion later, I tell Yosuke and Chie about what happened. And of course, they don't believe me. So we go to Juness and try it out on their TVs, and lo and behold, it works. Actually, it works so well that Yosuke's weak-ass bladder causes the three of us to fall inside the TV. And inside of the TV, we meet this guy. And you know what? I'm gonna say it. Teddy is by far the best mascot in this series, and I won't accept it any other way. Anyway, with that being said, Teddy lets us out, and later Later that night, Dojima tells us that Saki found the body of the victim and now she's gone missing. But luckily the next day, we figure out where she went. After we learn about Saki's death, Yosuke tells us that the girl we saw in the Midnight Channel was Saki, so he plans to go in the TV again for answers. And Teddy takes us to where Saki was thrown in. Then we get jumped by some shadows, and I awaken to my persona, Izanagi. But that's not Jack Frost. So, for this first fight, I can only use my basic attack to take down the enemies. After this, Yosuke learns Saki's true feelings about him, causing him to go in denial, summoning his shadow, which is a person's suppressed thoughts, and of course he rejects it, making it go berserk, and forcing me to put a stop to it. Yosuke's shadow starts off with Wind of Oblivion, which knocks down you, giving him an extra turn where he laughs. So from here, the boss fight is pretty simple. Anytime he goes for power charge to boost his next attack, I guard with you. Then I hit him with my normal attack, but that's where the problem lies. I can only get him down to half of his HP before I run out of medicine and die. I try a couple more times, but soon I just give up and use Izanagi, breaking my only rule of the challenge. But the video would be too short to end here, plus this is a tutorial battle. So I'll just sweep this fight under the rug, and with Yosuke's shadow defeated, he accepts his true self, and in return, he awakens to his new persona, Jiraiya. Then we come to the same conclusion. The person throwing people in here is the murderer, and that the shadows are the one that kills them. Later that night, Yukiko appears on the local news talking about her family's inn. Then during the same night, I see a woman wearing a kimono on the Midnight Channel. I wonder who that could be. The next day before school, Yosuke and I decide it's our job to stop the culprit with our personas, which allows me to start the first social link of the game, the magician social link. And unlike in Persona 3, certain social links will be important, like all of the party member social links, because by doing them you unlock better moves in battle. Rank 1 with Yosuke allows him to pick up a knock down ally. Then after checking the midnight channel again, we see Yukiko on it. So in order to save her, Yosuke stocks up on some weapons. Then we get arrested. Luckily we have Dojima on our side and we get set free. Holy shit. Anyway, after meeting Peak, we go into Yukiko's dungeon, where Chie starts doubting herself, summoning her shadow. And of course, she doesn't accept it, so it's up to Yosuke to defeat it, because I still don't have Jack Frost. The only attack I can do with you at the moment is a basic hit, which the shadow resists. But thanks to Yosuke having Garu, he can strike its weakness for an all-out attack. The only problem is that Chie's shadow knows Green Wall, which makes it resistant to win for three turns. So during this time, I heal with Daya, then the shadow will look at Yosuke, giving you a heads up that will use Mazio, an electric attack that will hit both party members. So in order to keep Yosuke alive, I guard. Then I'm able to hit it again with Garu, following it up with another all-out attack 
back. Rinse and repeat this method and soon Chie's shadow goes down. After Chie gets her persona, we agree to come back tomorrow to save Yukiko, which starts the full social link. Speaking of social links, the next day I start the chariot social link with Chie before going into Yukiko's palace. Now that the two tutorial boss fights are over, I can finally fuse Jack Frost. After getting to level 16, of course. So a couple golden hands later and I'm able to face Yukiko's shadow. Now her shadow is weak to ice, but at the same time, you and Chie are weak against fire attacks. So I start off by landing two ice attacks on round one and following them both up with all out attacks. Then the shadow will use white wall. It's just like green wall, but this time it will resist ice attacks. So while it's active, I use poison skewer with you and skull cracker with Chie. I also use Yosuke to heal and deal the occasional bit of damage with Sonic Punch. Then like with Chie's shadow, it will stare Chie, meaning that it's going to use Burn to Ashes, a powerful fire move that targets the whole party. So before she can use this, I guard just like before. Then at around half HP, the shadow will send out a prince, and it will constantly try to mute Chie and put fear on Yosuke and you. The bad thing about this is that if you or Yosuke has fear, the shadow will use Shivering Rondo, a move that will instantly kill the target if it has fear on it. But if you're able to get the prince to about half half health, he'll run away, and she'll start using Terror Song in hopes of putting fear on Yosuke and you, in order to use Shivering Rondo next turn. But because Jack Frost has been Patra, it can prevent it from happening. That is, until at the very end of the fight, where the Shadow only has 1 HP left, by the way, she lands a burn to ashes without warning, knocking down you, and then knocking out Chie with Augie. Then she lands a Terror Voice on you, and because he's paralyzed with fear, and with no items to remove it, the Shadow lands Shivering Rondo, knocking him out, causing me to start the whole fight over again. And to save us some time here, at the end of the next fight, she lands Terror Voice on Yosuke instead. So I can heal him with you, and then I finish the Shadow Wolf with Skullcracker from Chie. After the fight, Yukiko accepts her shadow and awakens to her persona. Then I have a dinner date with the stud himself, Toro Adachi. Now starts the second aspect of Persona games free time. During this time I start on Yosuke's social link, which I managed to get to rank 7 as well as having him learn to Kaija, a move that nullifies enemy buffs. I also start the Eon social link with Marie for later on in the game. Then after Yukiko recovers, she agrees to join your party. Now with her feeling better, I can start Chie's social link, where she learns Rebellion, a move that boosts crit rates for a one party member. But more importantly, I start the Jester social link with Adachi. I mean he's freaking Adachi, who wouldn't want to hang out with him? Then on the local news, a person named Kanji appears, and just like always, someone appears on the Midnight Channel who looks an awfully lot like him. So in order for me to catch the culprit, me and Yukiko stake out Kanji's house, where I also start the High Priestess social link with her. Then Kanji chases us off, and then that night, he fully appears on the TV. So now it's our job to save him. Shadow Kanji has two tough guys to help him out in this fight. One is weak to ice, while the other is weak to fire. And after the first turn, they'll use red and white wall on each other. But because the other one's dizzy, he doesn't get to set up a wall. As for the Shadow, at first he'll do one of two things. He'll either use Forbidden Murmur to poison you or Yosuke, or he'll He'll use Roar of Wrath to enrage Yukiko and Chie. As for his attacks, he has Mazio, which Yosuke is weak to, and then he'll usually follow it up with a Spirit Drain right after. I'm able to take out the tough guy weak to ice before Shadow Kanji gets to half health. Here, he'll use a move called Fanatical Spark, which knocks down Yosuke, so he gets to use Power Charge next turn, boosting his next Swift Strike, knocking out Yosuke and Chie. But because I think ahead, I use a Physical Mirror on you, and it deals an extra 260 damage damage to the shadow. After reviving my team, I take out the last tough guy, but then towards the end of the fight, he'll land another charged swift strike, knocking out the whole team except you, mainly because I use another physical mirror to reflect the attack. And with my last revival bead, I bring back Yukiko to continue healing you using media until she's knocked out by fanatical spark. But after that, with one more Bufala, Shadow Kanji goes down. After that, Kanji accepts himself and awakens to his new persona. As I wait for Kanji to recover, I do some more social links like Chie's, Yukiko's, who learns Divine Grace, boosting magic skills by 50%, Adachi's, and Marie's, as well as I finish Yosuke's social link. So now he can awaken to a new persona and learn Evade Electric. I also start a garden with Nanako, which will come in handy later. Then Kanji agrees to join my team, so to celebrate, I get my motor cycle license so I can now ride my bike around town. Then on the news I learned that an idol will be moving to Inaba, and by this point I think you get the picture now. And now it's time to 
save Risei from her shadow. But first, I start the automatic star social link with Teddy. Now before I fight, let me explain something I neglected to mention before. Shuffle time. Now how shuffle time works in this game is that you're given a random amount of cards each time. And the goal is to get rid of as many cards as you can in order to get a bonus sweep, which guarantees a new shuffle time next battle. This is how we make Jack Frost completely broken in a couple different ways. The first way is the Magician card. This card will evolve a random skill on your equipped persona. For instance, Jack Frost's Poison Skewer evolves into Poison Arrow, and then with another Magician card, Poison Arrow evolves into Virus Wave, a much better move. The next best card is the Emperor card. This card will level up your equipped persona by one level. Then you have the combination of the Justice, Strength, Hangman, Chariot, and Wheel of Fortune Tarot cards that boost your equipped persona stats by one. But out of all of these, the most important one is the Strength card that increases Jack Frost's magic attacks. Finally, you have the Minor Arcana cards. Cups for replenishing SP and HP, Wands for more experience points, Coins to boost money, and the most important one for this challenge, Swords for skill cards, which is how I taught Miragi and Dodge Fire to Jack Frost. I also forgot to mention that at level 25, Jack Frost learns a fantastic move with Mind Charge, a move that doubles your next magic attack when used. And now, with all that explained, let's save Risei. Now, the Risei fight is easy at first, with a Mind Charge Bufala dealing 208 damage right off the bat. Really, the only issue I have with her is that she'll randomly target a party member's weakness, but I'm able to get her to half HP where she'll use a move called Supreme Insight. From this point on, you won't be able to touch her, and then my team gets completely wiped out by the shadow, until the goat Teddy jumps in front of the party, completely destroying the shadow. Anyway, Risei accepts herself and gains a new persona. Then Teddy starts to doubt himself, summoning his creepy ass shadow, meaning it's the true boss of this dungeon. And if I'm being completely honest, Shadow Teddy isn't hard, but he is really, really tanky. He also blocks ice attacks, but so do I, so I really can't complain. Other than his charged up ice attacks, he has a move called Nihil Hand, but if you guard against it, it just doesn't hit you at all. He also has one called Nullity Guidance, but he only uses it twice during this whole fight, so I just attack with you and Chie and use Diorama with Yosuke and Yukiko until I finish Shadow Teddy off with one more virus wave. Then Teddy gets his new persona, as well as he grows a human body inside of his suit. I'm not really sure how the automaty of a Teddy works, but it seems fine with me. Also, there's a new dead body in town, but instead of it being Risei, it's actually the homeroom teacher, King Moron. Speaking of Risei, she joins the investigation team as well as I start the lover social link with her. Speaking of social links, I get the rank 6 with Idachi, so now I have to wait until the investigation is over to continue it. I'll always miss him. Anyway, we learn that the killer is this incel redditor dude, and that he's been hiding out in the TV, so yours truly has to go kick his ass now. But before I do, however, I upgrade Virus Wave into Blight, as well as I upgrade Bufala into Mabufala, and Ice Boost into Ice Amp. I also get the skill card for Invigorate 1 that I upgrade into Invigorate 2. So now onto the worst boss in this game. It doesn't matter how good your personas are or your level for this fight because it's pure RNG for this battle. Don't believe me? Then look at this. Yeah! So to save you some time, I'll just go over my winning attempt. He starts off with a move called Character Setup that gives him armor that you need to destroy in order to attack his main body. Then once he's in his little baby form, he'll set up a random wall, but more importantly, the wall he sets up will be the type of magic he uses. And because he sets up green wall, he'll use wind attacks that my party doesn't have any weaknesses to. And at this point, a charged Mabufala is dealing around 300 damage. Then the shadow will start to rebuild its armor, but luckily I destroy it before it's finished, causing me to land an all-out attack. But then he he starts to rebuild it again and manages to completely build it. It's not hard to remove, but it does have a strong magic attack that targets the whole party. But because Yukiko has Meteorama now, it's pretty easy to heal the whole entire party. And then when I destroy the armor, the little baby thing goes for White Wall, which is bad for two reasons. The first is that my ice attacks are now weakened, and secondly, Yukiko is weak to ice, so now I'll have to guard with her or be hit with an unlucky Megidola. Luckily, he starts building his armor back up, which means he's done 
using Mabufala. Then after I destroy his armor, I follow it up with an all out attack for the kill on Kubo's shadow. Then we turn him over to the police and we have a victory omelette party to celebrate. After that, summer vacation starts and I immediately finish Chie socialing so she can awaken to a new persona as well as I finish Yukiko socialing so she can awaken to a new persona as well. I also start working on Risei socialing because it's probably the most broken one in the entire game. Then soon school starts back up and Naoto is now attending school there. I should probably mention that Naoto was assigned to help out with being a detective on the murder case. But now with the case over, she's now a normal student. I also managed to finish Marie's social link before Naoto tells us that something seems off with the case. So she goes on a TV interview to discuss the finer details. Then guess who shows up on the Midnight Channel now? And before this fight, I changed Mabufu into Bufala and I changed Maragi into Mazionga. Now it's time to face one of the easiest bosses in this game because my attacks deal over 100 damage now and a charged up Mabufala deals a whopping 400 damage. Not to mention Chie now has power charge and the only thing Naoto's shadow can really do is mute my party members personas. Even when the shadow goes for something scary like Heat Razor, I can just counter it with Dekaja from Yosuke. Then Naoto's shadow falls to a Bufala from Chie and with that I get one of the most broken teammates in the Persona series. Now that Naoto needs to recover, I spend my time by starting the Emperor social link with Kanji. I know it's kinda late in the game for this, but it's pretty easy to get through. I also finish Risei social link so she can awaken to a new persona as well. Then on the 4th of November, a new person shows up on the Midnight Channel, but it's way too blurry to see who it is. Then the next day, I receive a suspicious letter in the mail, and for some reason I open it right in front of the same detective that tells me not to worry about this case. And of course, Dojima being worried for my safety takes me into questioning. During this time, we learned that it was Nanako on the Midnight Channel, but by the time Naoto arrives at the house, Nanako is already kidnapped. We learned that there was no forced entry into the house, so Nanako had to willingly let the killer in. And from the list of suspects, we found one that could fit that evidence. Taro Namatame, the same person who had an affair with the first victim of the case. And it seems Dojima has already figured it out. But as he gives chase to Namatame, they both end up in a traffic accident. And to escape arrest, Namatame jumps into the TV in the back of his truck. So now, with Dojima bedridden in the hospital, it's up to us to save Nanako. During her palace, Jack Frost skills evolve again. Resist fire evolves into null fire, so now I have no weakness, and invigorate 2 evolves into invigorate 3. Then I arrive at the top floor of the palace, where Namatame is holding Nanako captive. That is, until he starts absorbing shadows, and turns into Kuni no Sagiri, the next boss. Now this boss was easier than I initially thought. He starts out using all elemental magic, and because Naoto took Yosuke's spot, I lose my electric type weakness, but when he does land a weakness on a party member, he follows it up with the Kaija because Risei is constantly placing buffs on the party at this point. Then the Sagiri will use a move called Quad Coverage. This makes 3 out of the 4 elemental magic attacks do very little damage, but in return it gives one a massive boost. The first element that gets boosted is Fire. Magic both Yukiko and Naoto have, but after Naoto gets wiped out, I remember why I started the garden in the first place. Because of the Makura corn I grew there. This allows one magic attack to be reflected, so I use it on Naoto for the next magic attack to be boost. And when he goes for an attack on Naoto, it deals a fat 500 damage to himself. And then my mind charge Bufala deals another 500 damage. After this, he'll take control of everyone in the party except you. But he only does this once, and it only lasts for two turns, so it could have been worse. Finally, in his last phase, he'll use a move called Unearing Justice that deals about 200 damage to each party member. But other than that, he has nothing, and eventually I finish him off with one more Bufala. After that, we rush both Nanako and Namatame to the hospital, and now with Namatame in the police custody, the investigation is over, and I can start Adachi social link again. As I wait for Dojima and Nanako to heal, I finish Kanji social link so he can awaken to a new persona as well, and I also start to wheel a fortune social link with Naoto, and I manage to finish it fast to awaken her new persona as well, where she learns Invigorate 3, and then I mention that she also learns Mind Charge during her social link, as well as if you invite her to the hot springs, she can learn the other two elemental magic attacks. Anyway, with her social link finished, I completed all the social links I needed for this run. Now, onto the story. On December 3rd, Adachi calls me to inform me that Nanako is doing poorly. So we rush to the hospital, and the doctor tells us that they still have no idea what's going on with her. Then she goes into critical condition, before finally succumbing to her illness and passing away. Now, with the tension in the group at an all-time high, we decide to have a chat with Namatame, where we 
had the option to throw him into the TV, but after calming everyone down, we decide to wait until tomorrow to question him about his actions. This maxes out the full social link, and with that, Nanako manages to make a miraculous recovery. Then Teddy goes missing, but because of our limited time, we have to focus on getting answers out of Namatame, where we learn that even though he did kidnap everyone we saved, he didn't kill the first two victims. Now with our backs against the wall, we look at all the evidence again. The culprit has to have ties to the first two victims, as well as they have to be close enough with Nanako and Dojima to put a letter in their mailbox, meaning there's only one person that could have done this, the funny cabbage man himself, Toro Adachi. When confronted about it, he jumps into the hospital TV, giving us all the evidence we need to stop him. Also, Teddy awakens to his final persona after seeing Nanako alive and well again, so he's back on the team now. Now, before I face Adachi, I give Jack Frost Resist Physical, which evolves into Null Physical, as well as I fuse two new personas, Dekarabia and Harati. And if I go to the coffee shop with them, they give me the skill cards Megidola and Bufudine. And while grinding, these skills evolve into Megidolon and Mubufudine. The final change I make to my little snow friend is that I give him Spellmaster, a skill that cuts SP usage in half. Now it's time to face the only good detective villain in a Persona game. Adachi goes for Heat Razor, a move that raises all stats of a single party member. I forgot to mention Naoto has this as well. So I land a charge Megidolon dealing almost 200 damage. Then I realize that Mabufadine does a lot more damage thanks to Ice Amp. As for Adachi's moves, well, Vaporeal Blade does a lot, but he can't hit you thanks to Null Physical. His two elemental magic attacks are Electric and Wind, so he can't strike any weaknesses. Really the only thing I have to worry about is Evil Smile that strikes fear into the party because he'll follow it up with Ghastly Well to insta-kill the party members with fear. But because Yukiko has Marita, he never lands it once and before long Adachi goes down. But that's not the true boss fight here. Amino Sagiri is. Amino Sagiri is not only tanky, but he hits like a freight train with moves like Megidolon and Omnirista. A very powerful physical move that Risei luckily blocks. But that's not all. At around three-fourths of damage dealt, he'll use a move called Nebula Oculus that if not fully healed up for, will kill. I managed to get him down to a quarter of HP left before using up all my items and falling due to a Megidolon. So after my loss, I decide to grind my team up to level 75. Mainly so Chie could learn God Fist and Naoto could learn Megidolon. And this time I save up Yukiko's magic by using healing items first against his weaker attacks. Now it's time to talk about his move Bewildering Fog. And when he does this, you will not be able to hit him. Then he'll set up a mind charge. And in order to live this, you'll need to boost your party's defense and guard at the same time. Luckily, he only does this two times during the fight. Now with Chie dealing 400 per hit, as well as an additional 400 per hit with you, and with a lot of healing and revival items used, and when I mean a lot, I mean a lot, with one more Mabufadine from you, Amino Sagiri falls, and the fog is lifted from Inaba. And now with Adachi in police custody, the murders are finally over. And with that, a new year rolls around. So I go wish everyone a happy new year until I learn that Marie is missing, so I ask Elizabeth to find her for me. During this time, I hang out with my party members to unlock their ultimate personas. Naoto learns Shield of Justice, a move that blocks all attacks from the party once. Chie learns Dragon Hustle, a move that boosts all stats of the party. Then Yukiko learns Burning Petals, a fire move that does severe damage to all enemies. As much as I would love to go into detail about my other party members' moves, they're just not as important as my main lineup. I'm sorry, Teddy. As I mentioned before, by going to the hot springs with Naoto, she can learn all elemental magic, so I teach her Zeodyne. Then, after inviting her again, she learns Angelic Grace, a move that boosts her evasion rate against everything but dark light and almighty attacks. Then, during my ski trip, Elizabeth finds Marie, or, well, she tells us where we can find her. So, after entering the most annoying dungeon in the game, Game, we learn that Marie is a Sagiri, and that she must die or the fog will come back. But if we defeat the Sagiri inside her, we can save her, so that's what we do. And to be honest, to call this a boss fight is just an insult to other bosses in the game. The gimmick of this fight is that you'll block everything but almighty attacks, so you're supposed to use the items you get in the dungeon to remove her resistances, and by doing this, you'll deal massive damage. But the problem about this fight isn't the gimmick, it's the amount of damage she does. Her favorite move is run a muck, a move that has the chance to deal about 100 damage, but really only does 30 to 60. Then she has Draining Fog, a move that steals 50 SP from each party member, but in return she takes around 200 damage. Now this move is fine, except for the fact that you can easily recover that SP 
from the items you get in the dungeon. She also has a move called Shake Off that deals around 200 damage to each party member, but she rarely goes for it. Towards the end of the fight, she'll use Cry of Denial to mute all party members' personas, but at this point it's too late into the fight, so I just take her out with a Zeodyne from Naoto. And with that gimmick boss defeated, Marie is now safe and sound, and after a month, it's time for me to leave the sleepy town of Inaba but something's off. As I'm hanging out with the group one more time, the Midnight Channel is mentioned again, and everyone wants to know where it started from. Hell, even Adachi sends me a letter asking how all of this happened, as well as a heartfelt message. So I asked Nanako and Dojima what happened on the day I came into town, and Nanako mentions the weird gas attendant. So when I go confront this minimum wage worker, it's revealed that she's behind everything. So in order to solve one last mystery, I face Izanami in a final battle. I wasn't sure what level I should have been for this fight, but I was around level 85 anyway, but what I'm trying to say is that the first phase was pretty easy. She'll only use elemental magic and Megidolon, and towards the end of the fight, she'll go for a charged Megidolon, but thanks to Naoto, the attack is completely blocked. Then I use the Orb of Light Igor gave me to reveal her true form, starting the second phase. She starts off with a Mind Charge, then lowers my defense, so I Dragon Hustle with Chie, raising my party stats. Then she'll use Fury of Yasogami, that only deals around 200 damage. Another move she'll go for is Kuro Ikazuchi that deals around 150 damage to each party member. But her most powerful move is Summons to Yomi that completely misses. Then the next time she uses it, Risei blocks the attack. Then after that, I guess she got butt hurt that she never landed it so she stops going for it. Then at the end of the fight she'll go for Thousand Curses that kills off your party members one by one until finally you succumbs to it. Then you hear all the voices of your friends. Also the funny cat man is here. And now, with all that power inside you, you awaken to your final persona, Izanagi no Okami. And now, with your ultimate persona, you can use its ultimate move, Myriad Truth. And with the press of the X button, your fight comes to an end. And then, you manage to see the truth with your own eyes. The next day, you board the train out of town, and watch as your friends run along the track. And as the screen fades to black, the credits roll. So, can you beat Persona 4 Golden with only Jack Frost? No. No, you can't. Izanagi is needed to defeat Yosuke Shadow in the beginning. And even if you manage to beat it without Izanagi, in order to defeat Izanami, you have to use Myriad Truths, which is a skill I don't think Jack Frost can learn, sadly. But anyway, it was nice to play my favorite Persona game on this channel. I really hope I can do more content in this game, as well as in other Persona games in the future. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you subscribe for future uploads. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a fantastic day.